So, yeah, it's just her Joyce, and I tell her every time I see her, and I haven't got a chance this time, but, um, and whoever hasn't done it yet, man, the shame be on them. You know, all these recordings that have already been done up until just now, I would pay $50, $100 for just on a disc. I still listen to CDs, you know? Are those like eight, does any, raise your hand if you know what a CD is. <laughs> Amen, you bunch of old farts. <laughs> Amen, but, uh, but anyway, I, I, would, I would buy, thank you so much, sis, and uh, your family is a huge encouragement. This, this church is, is a, or, okay, these churches uh, are all a huge encouragement to me, and even folks from our church finally got to come to church camp. So, uh, and we didn't get to embarrass you yesterday on your wedding anniversary, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, our Iris and Francisco, uh, yesterday was their wedding anniversary, so please congratulate them, and um, amen, and uh, so I'm really just blessed, and uh, Sister Erin, she's somewhere, where is Sister Erin? Oh, there you are. You know, and uh, her family is, is one of the long-coming families to our church, and they drive an hour and a half one way and uh, to deal with me. So, man, you know they got some grace. Um, <laughs> what's so funny? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I'm just uh, really, really blessed to be up here. Um, I don't know if Brother Rob told everybody or if it got around the camp, but uh, a, a real black bear walked through the camp today. Oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's scary to me. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, anyway, but thank God, you know, that bear didn't stop. <laughs> and, um, you know, amen. amen. Uh, let's open your Bibles to Acts chapter 12 and... Um, I'll just open in a word of prayer. God, we thank you so much for your mercy and grace, Lord. Uh, we thank you, God, in the midst of uh, the chaos of coming up here and uh, even the chaos on the top of the mountain, Lord, that, that you're in control and we confess to you, Lord, and I want to confess to you specifically, Lord, that you know I'm, I'm not the person in you that I should be. I'm probably the least qualified to be up here. But God, um, your mercy and grace has given me an opportunity. And Lord, uh, I have nothing to share with your folks, Lord, other than what you've given me. And I just pray that you'd just move me aside and that you would um, just, you know, speak through me uh, if you'd so see fit. And um, I thank you for, for a church camp, Lord. I thank you for, um, you know, at least a, a personal revival for a lot of these folks here. And... Um, and we just ask that you'd be with us now in these next few moments. Help me to preach, Lord. And um, all this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, so believers throughout history have found themselves in prison. You know, um, you think about the Old Testament. You think about Daniel uh, in the lion's den, the three Hebrew children in the furnace. Um, you think about in the New Testament, like John the Baptist ended up in prison, had to get beheaded. You think about Peter, Paul. Man, th these are people that um, the average church wouldn't allow to preach behind their pulpit. Why? They had a rap sheet. They're in and out of prison, in and out of prison, in and out of prison. And... Um, and uh, even in, in history, in, you know, I, I haven't studied as much of church history as I should, and going to the type of church that I grew up in, I was ripped off. You know, Calvary Chapel doesn't teach church history at all. And, um, but I finally, you know, because uh, Brother Walker, Dr. Peacock, uh, they uh, forced me to do a little study, you know, on church history. You know, you got to pick a, pick a missionary, you're going to do a little, little study. <laughs> So finally, I was forced to buckle down, and um, I, I, I picked Adoniram Judson. Oh, yeah. <sighs> and see, see, brother. <laughs> That's why I had to run outside. I would have been worse if I didn't. But uh, Adoniram Judson really didn't even get to see converts. 
and um, he spent most of his time in prison uh, writing a Bible on shreds of paper and putting them in a pillow. <laughs> and, um, but I didn't come here to really talk about going to prison. You know, uh, the fact is, we're going to go home. <laughs> we're going to go back to work. You probably won't even get a speeding ticket. You know, I mean, you won't get caught. <laughs> Amen. You know, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, but you know, I mean, you're you're not. I I don't know if anyone. I don't want to know if anyone in here has been to prison. First of all, don't raise your hand if that is you. But, but you know, the the fact is, you're probably never going to go. You know, you live in a country, and and I mean, you're surrounded. I mean. I, I guess I'll just press pause there and just say, aren't we spoiled? Yes. Like, I've been to some church camps. You know, you know what a church camp is? This is my mind. This is what a church camp is. You know, there's some teenage group of stinking kids that have Fs on, on, at my, on their grades, you know, but they can play guitar, so they get in the church band, and, you know, they just rock, you know, and they don't even know what they're saying. It's just like, and, you know, and on the off time, they have a jam session. You know, and, and, and it's just like nobody's serious. You know, guys are trying to hook up with the girls and, you know, and like leaving camp and stuff. And you're wondering, like, who's smoking and whatever. And, and uh, I'm not saying it's not good to find a mate up here. Amen? Amen! <laughs> you know, if you want to find a mate, this is a pretty good group to pick from, I'd say. This is a good group. And that's natural, okay? Yes. Male with female. We heard yes. all that, you know? Yes. But, uh, you know, and you you're, talk to your pastor, you know, talk to their parents. Yes. Like, get them involved. I mean, you want to get serious about this thing, let's do it, you know? But, um, but anyway, that, that's a church camp to me. And, like, I, I don't know if you really understand, Sister Joy's coming up here. People pay hundreds of dollars to hear what you got for, what, 300 bucks? <laughs> Woo! Amen. You know? But most of you kids, you didn't pay. Your parents paid. You know? And uh, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. You know? My, my, my dad, he would always pay for me to do anything with the church. And I, I marked my salvation at a church camp. And uh, my dad paid for me. And uh, I can't even talk about what got me up there and all that stuff because I won't be able to finish my message. But you guys and me, we are just spoiled rotten. Yes. You don't even re- I mean, even just having this book here, you don't, you, don't even, you don't even understand. You don't get it. You don't get it. I mean, maybe the Koreans get it, like actually from Korea, Koreans, like knowing at least what the northerners are going through in Korea. I mean, maybe they get a, this much, but if, if you've never had to live through that, you don't really get it, you know. Yes. You're spoiled. But you know what? The prison system I want to talk about is a different prison system. This prison is only full of Christians. And they're stuck in a prison that's built by the devil. And, uh, and it's a mental prison. And you're up here. You're at church camp. And you're shouting and you're screaming. And you know in your heart the bars are there. You're stuck. Yeah. Come on, listen. And... The, the good point I want to say about that is a lot of these people running around, screaming, shouting, throwing a hymn book, they got bad problems. And, and it's everything they could do to just say, Amen! And you all got it. I'm not the only one is what I'm saying. It's not just me. You know? And, um, but the devil's main tool is deception. Turn to Revelation. Hold your finger there. Turn to Revelation 12. The devil's main tool is deception. Go to Revelation 12. Look at verse 9. 
And it says, I got to speed up, so I apologize if I can't wait. You could write it down, but, you know, uh, I'm already bad at, at time limits. <laughs> but, <laughs> and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which, what, deceiveth the whole world. Now, is that without exception or without distinct? No, it's the whole world. Right? The one, that's what you do with John 3.16, right? That's the whole world, isn't it? He deceiveth the whole world. Now, um, the fact is, probably most of what you think you know today about your country, about everything you've learned, there's an element of deception in there. And it's just a fact. And, um, and uh, the devil's good at his job, is what I'm saying. He's very good at his job. Uh, uh, it's not his first rodeo. <laughs> go, to, go to 1 Timothy 2.14. 1 Timothy 2.14. Let's just kind of get a little resume here. Going for the devil. See who we're messing with here before we get into our message. 1 Timothy 2.14, and it says, uh, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You know, uh, I heard uh, Brother Jim White, uh, he used to preach the blowouts and stuff, really hilarious guy. If you get his blowout collection, I would encourage you to get it. He yeah. was an excellent preacher. He's yeah. in glory. Um, but, you know, uh, he showed me something. Uh, that, you know, Adam and Eve were humanity's perfect representatives. Like, perfect. Like, you know, I, I'm not all, I, I don't know what all the statistics are, but you only have access to a small portion of your brain because of what happened in the garden. Yes. They had full access. Amen. They were perfect. And, I mean, I know a lot of times we will kick Eve up and down the street, right? But you know what? Because she got deceived, Adam went along with that thing, and whatever the reason was, my point is, the devil's good at his job. Yes. You're, you, even if you're a man, <laughs> you're not better than Eve. Oh, yeah. Eve had more capability, more spiritual capability. She walked with God in the morning, like, in that garden. She walked with him. You never have, well, Randy, spiritually application, and no, no. We're talking real deal. Yes. She walked with him. Yeah. You didn't. All right? And uh, there's a reason why that is. And, you know, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Is, I get all that. But my point is, he deceived one of humanity's perfect representatives. Yes. All right? Now, um, go to 1 John 1, 8, and I want to show you another problem you got with this deception. Because the, the devil, he's not working alone. In 1 John 1, 8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, read those next few words. You know what that means? You ever heard, uh, love is blind? It's because you could deceive yourself. You know, you ever seen a couple and you're just like, wow, that is not going to work for like five minutes. <laughs> Oh, we love each other. And it's just like, dude, you are deceived. <laughs> right? You're just deceived. Like, I'm sorry. Like, we'll be here when you come back, but it ain't going to be long. You know? And the fact is, not only is the devil good at deceiving, but you now have the ability, as the Bible has shown us, to deceive yourself. You know? And um, um, so we'll just keep moving. You can deceive yourself. But between the world, the flesh, and the devil, using doubt and depression, this is almost a foolproof plan to destroy your Christianity. Foolproof. Almost. <laughs> almost foolproof. And um, let's look at our text now. We're in Acts chapter 12. And uh, just because I think it makes the devil mad, I think let's stand for the reading of God's Word. And bear with me here, I'm going to read a few verses. Uh, we're in Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, now about that time, 
Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter, notice the word, <laughs> to bring him uh, forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Uh, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the devil, uh, whoa, excuse me, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Verse 7, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands, yeah. and the angel... <sighs> and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he, uh, he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And... And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought that he saw a vision. Uh, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened unto them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. You may be seated. Now, I'm going to preach a message today called uh, Cast Out, Not Cast Away, for Zonk. <laughs> okay? All right? I threw you a bone there. You'll thank me later when you... Super Zonk. But my, my first point, or uh, my first point that I want to look at here is... If you should find yourself in this mental prison, I believe we're given a recipe here to get out. And what you're going to see in verse 7 there says, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined. You need to cast in some light. That's my first point. By the way, <laughs> you need to cast in some light. Now, Peter found himself in a third world prison, and everything I know about a third world prison is from Adoniram Judson's story. They got dirt floors, rats, cockroaches. And um, uh, one interesting thing about his story was uh, he would not get fed if his wife did not come and feed him. They're not even going to feed you. Why? For what? Why waste our money and our food on you? You're just some prisoner. And um, that's a real prison. There's no amenities. You know, uh, uh, most children, I was thinking, they're afraid of the dark, aren't they? Yes. You know, and, um, and those prisons, they're not going to be paying an electric bill. An electric bill? Candles? <laughs> You are sitting in the dark, buddy. And you're wondering what's picking at your toes. Um, uh, there's another uh, uh, story of a, of a World War II uh, prisoner of war named Darlene Rose. And there's a, a full recording somewhere out there that you can get from her. Uh, and, tch, dude, that will peel your hair back, listening to what she had to go through. And uh, you know what? There was only one crack in her cell room that light would come through. And um, I'll just say this, and then we'll move on. But uh, as the sun would kind of come across the room, it cast a light on her bowl of rice that they would give her, one bowl of rice a day. And um, you know what? She started hallucinating and thinking, wow, they put some meat on top of my rice. And it was maggots. And those maggots provided the protein for her to live. She praised the Lord. For, for maggots. Now, 
That's a third world prison right there. That's a real, that's the real deal. And this was the type of prison that Peter was sitting in. A real, real prison. And most children, they're afraid of the dark, right? You know, uh, I just, I remember begging my mom to leave the, the, the door at least a little bit cracked with the hall light on. And uh, this was something I had growing up. And um, probably because we were watching too much TV. And always when it gets like after 7 or something, they start putting on all this junk. Yes. And uh, I just remember begging my mom, can you read me a Bible story? She probably regrets it today. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, brother. But she read it. She read me those Bible stories. And I didn't grow up in church. But, you know, my, my grandma, she was a TBN Christian, man. And uh, she was a lifelong alcoholic. But she bought me these little books. She got me those... Uh, Greatest story ever told videos. I don't know if, if they even exist anymore. But, you know, um, you got to get some light in that cell. You got to figure out what's going on. If you can't see, it's scary. Go to uh, John 17, 17. Just hold your finger and axe. We're going to keep going back. John 17, 17. And it says this. It says, sanctify them. Uh, through thy truth, thy word is truth, right? Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And I want to look at verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. And it says, The entrance of thy words giveth what? You see that? Light. You got to get some light in that cell. No, but I go to a good church. I said, you got to get some light in that cell, man. Right. But I'm at church camp. you got to get some light in yeah. there. Yes. You know, I mean, we're all, amen, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. How about you? Oh, I'm great. Awkward silence. Yeah. All right, man, well, have a good one. All right. <laughs> but now, now look at Romans 10. Go to Romans 10. We're talking about getting some light in that cell room. And it says this. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, there's a problem with prisoners. And and if we were to run a prison, uh, we would want to remove all hope from those people ever escaping. That is how you run a prison. You know, if you got to take them around and you need to feel the bricks on this wall, feel them. No, hit them. Hit them with your knuckles. They're hard, huh? You're never going to get out of these walls. Ever. You're going to say, come on, let me show you your cell room. Yeah, we got these bars here. Oh, they're just made brand new. We had a professional welder. We got Robert Randall out there, man. He's, he's busting out these welds with his left hand. Go ahead. Try to bend them. Try to bend it! I can't. I know you can. And now you know you can't. You're stuck. You're not going anywhere. Oh, let me show you your bedroom. Where's the bed? There is no bed. You're in prison. What what, what time is breakfast? Huh? Oh, we got to feed you? Huh. Um, Pray. (laughs) You know, and the, the thing is, once you can get some light into that prison room through the word of God, it starts to give you hope. Yes. And I preached a, a message, it was a few months ago at our church, and I, I, I started looking into these uh, prison breaks. <laughs> it's, an inter- it's very interesting. And there, there was a man, he was ex-construction named John Parsons, 
And uh, this guy broke out of one of these top security prisons that nobody had ever broke out of. And, you know, uh, he just started kind of uh, running his finger along the mortar of one of those bricks. And, hmm, started kind of looking around. He was waiting to get the death penalty or something. He shot a cop, which I'm not saying that's right, but. We're not talking about him, are we? We're t what I'm using that example for is the motivation he had. He knew if he was going to stay in there, it was going to be very bad for him. So he started looking around, and he's like, whoa, there's a fan grill. A fan grill. Hmm. I wonder what you could do with a fan grill. Good. And he got one of those fins. And every day he would just score that mortar on the brick. He'd just score it. You know, you're not going to get nothing quick, but hey, we got right. nothing but time. Yes. Amen? Yes. We got time, man. Yes. We're doing time. Yes. You're doing time. Yeah. Yes. And this man picks up that fin, and he just starts scoring around that brick. Until one day, that brick came loose. I couldn't imagine what that would feel like. I can't believe it came loose. He had to start figuring out, well, I got to put the brick back so they don't find it because I, I need more time. I got to really plan this. I don't, I'm getting out of this place. I ain't sticking around. He got toilet paper and he rolled it up. <laughs> Trip out on this. This guy colored the toilet paper with Jolly Ranchers to match the paint. Roll call. Yes, sir. All right, let me inspect your, your cell here. All right, you know, look under the mattress. All right, looks all good. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. You seem a little chipper today, Mr. Parsons. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm just trying to count my blessings. <laughs> they close that cell. He waits till lights out, then he starts to inspect again. John Parsons got out of prison, not by that brick. When he took that brick out, he found another brick wall. You know, a lot of us, we'd quit. I'm never getting out. I'm never getting out. You start thinking about uh, uh, special ways to use bed sheets. You know, yeah, I'm never getting out of here. It's over. It's over. I'm never getting out of here. Not John Parsons. He's hanging out in the lunch yard. He's real particular about who he wants his friends to be because he's, he's only got one purpose. Yeah. Good, brother. I don't got time for you, bro. That's good, brother. Come on. That's real good. Yes. Oh, no. Don't take it personal. Yeah. Come You're on. just not serious. Yeah. I got a plan. You're dying in here. I don't got time for you, bro. I'm getting out. He's walking around in the yard, and he realizes there's a gap where those cameras don't catch. <laughs> but there's a guard. But the guard, who knows, man? He's probably like this, you know? I mean, so John Parsons, instead of uh, thinking of other creative ways to use bed sheets, he, he makes a ladder rope out of his bed sheets. And he says, hey, to one of his serious friends, will you help me? That, bro, God bless you. I will help you with everything I can. I will help you get out of here. Yeah. And maybe one day when, when you're out, <sighs> yeah. maybe you could help me. So he got a buddy to help him, and at the right time, when that security guard wasn't paying attention, they threw that thing over the gate, and John Parsons got out. Out of a maximum security prison by climbing over the gate. Randy, that doesn't happen. It did. You're sitting in your prison. I, well, I'm trying to share that story with you because you know what? You're looking at your situation, and you're saying that doesn't happen. It does happen. Come on, yeah. Come on brother. Oh, 
It does happen. Is it rare? Sure. It's rare. But if you're willing to buckle down and get serious and make some hard decisions and not let that mental prison get to you, you can get out. You can get out. I mean, if, if you didn't hear nothing, hear that. You can get out. Hey, man. Whatever you're going through, there is a way out. Now, um, so you can get some light in that cell through the Bible. And I want to show you now. Go to Acts chapter uh, 12 and look at verse 5 here. You can get some light in that cell through prayer. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season from the church unto God for him. And the fact is, if that wasn't happened, you wouldn't have the rest of the story. I just want to point that out. Your prayers for your brethren, your prayers for your family, your prayers for your children, your prayers for your parents, your prayers for your church, your prayers for your pastor. Someone prays for the pastor every now and then, I hope. Amen. You know, because yes. by golly, your pastor could be sitting in a prison. Are you praying for him? Come on, brother. Yes. Amen, brother. Anyone praying around here? We got to get some light in this cell. Yes. Uh, go to Psalm 22. Psalm 22, verse 3. That thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. That's nice, man. That's a cute verse. (laughs) Did you see what happens with the praises? Well, Randy, that's for Israel. That's not for us. No, no. That's Israel. You're a son. That's Israel. You've been bought and purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But Randy, that's Israel. How much more with you? How much more with you? That's called a practical application. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, when you're looking for light, man, you can find some light. Yeah, yes. When you're hungry, man, every bitter thing is sweet. Yeah. I'll take what I can get. Yes. Yeah, that's good, brother. That's good. Go to Psalm 122. Verse uh, 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Um, I, all my stories are bad examples of me. I, I mean, for some reason, I'm just such blockheaded, man, that I've had to learn everything the hard way. And I've had periods in my life where the only place I could feel God was in church. Amen. And if he's going to inhabit the praises of his people, I'm going to sneak in the back door. Amen. I want to feel him. And you know, some of you, when you start getting in these prisons, you stop going to church. You need to sneak in the back door. They don't accept me. God will. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you don't need people to slobber and kiss you and hug you every time you go. I mean, you know, they think I'm like the scum of the earth. Sneak in the back door, man. Sneak in the back door. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you get just a little glimpse of light. Yeah, that's good. And I know what you're doing. Well, I could just watch it online. Come on, come on, brother. 
You know what I don't post online? We don't post us singing the hymns online. He inhabits the praises. You need to come to church, guys. Yes. That's true for sure. I don't know what else to tell you about that. And I think you probably get that beat in your head every time you guys meet. But there's a reason why we keep telling you that. And you don't have to learn the hard way. Okay? Okay. So my sub points for cast in some light is the first one is Bible. The second one is prayer. The third one is church. And about this, and I, I wanted to tie this in with Gene's message. He said, are you depressed? Sing a hymn. You know what Martin Luther said about that? Let us sing psalms and spite the devil. Amen. So, you know, I got thinking about that. Open your Bible to Psalm 37. And I only know one, man, because I grew up most of my life in the wrong church. I know one. This is the one I know. This is going to be my special. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. With his hand. With his hand. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Hallelujah, though he fall, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And then my, my next point is others. Bible, prayer, church, and others. You know how to get some light into that cell? Start rescuing the perishing. Yeah. I should have done this years ago, and I just started recently, but I got a list in the, in the back of my Bible where I write those folks that I've been able to lead to the Lord. And since uh, August 2nd of 2021, I got four. Amen. Amen. And I, I write them down. Actually, it's five because it was a son and a, and a, and a mom one, was one of them. So it's five souls. And you may sing those hymns, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your... <sighs> There's a reason why they say count your blessings. Because when you're sitting in a prison cell and you got nothing but time, you might have to start counting some blessings. Why you need to hold on and wake up tomorrow. You might need to start reading some Adoniram Judson stories to say, if he can get him through it, he can get me through it. You might have to start looking for someone to follow. You know, and, and maybe, maybe it's your pastor. Maybe you've got a lot in common with your pastor. That's a blessing. Maybe it's some older Christian in the Lord. You know, but my point is, you need to start studying those people that have got out of the prison. Good, that have been able to break out of the prison system. Yeah. And you need to get serious about it. You can quit reading Dr. Seuss, my friend. I mean, it's t- I mean you, you realize there's been prisoners that got in jail and all they did was start hitting those books to the point of where they represented themselves in jail and won! Yeah. Amen. Amen. You need to study to show thyself approved unto God. Amen. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. So my second point is cast off the chains. We're back in Acts chapter 12. Let's look at verse 7. It says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And the chains fell off from his hands. Now, I got three things on this, uh, and um, the first one is a good smoting. 
Some of us need a good smoting. Yeah. What's a smoting? Yeah. A smoting is to get smited. <laughs> Saul said to David, I'll smite thee to the wall, you know, or Jonathan, one of them. But some of us need a good smoting. And I, you know what? When I, when I read through this thing too fast, and I, was, I was doing my own little study. I was like, oh, man, he kicked Peter in the rear end. And, and I was like, I, and I was so sure. I was like, oh, man, that's going to preach. That's going to preach. And, and then I, I, I looked back and I said, no, it said he smote him on the side. But you're not Peter, are you? I'm not either. You know what we need? We need a good kick in the rear end. That's what we need. Uh, look, at, look at Hebrews chapter 12. Let me show you some biblical exegesis. Hebrews chapter 12, and look at verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all, you like that word, are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You, you, you know what? You know what a part of this deception process is? Is you're sitting in this spiritual, mental, created by none other than the devil himself prison. It's to convince you that you're not saved anymore. There's a few reasons for that. First of all, if he can detach any hope of you ever getting out, he wants to do it. Yes. But second of all, you never took five minutes to really look at the subject. Okay. And us pastors, I would say especially dispensational pastors, this is a heavy-hitting subject, which is not a Calvinist distinctive, which you will be accused of. I'm not a Calvinist. Actually, I think all my Calvinist friends hate me. I'm not a Calvinist. You know, one, one of my buddies I was in my last band with, he's a Calvinist. And man, I'm so smooth. I gave him, and I, I'm, like, I'm like new to the whole King James movement. Man, I gave him some Gil Ripplinger video on the five points of Calvinism being the five marks of death. That guy was so angry at me. Man, and he got tagged by Gail Ripplinger, bro. That's like getting rebuked from your aunt or your, or your grandma. She's like, well, here it kind of says you're wrong. <laughs> he couldn't even handle that, bro. She's got a perm. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but you know what a good smoting is a blunt force what does that mean it's a blunt force and God will give it to you if you need it but when you get it you can rejoice <laughs> that he dealeth with you as with a son <laughs> amen we'll move on because I don't know what time it is uh, <laughs> Next, a good heating. We need a good heating. In uh, Acts 12, 7, uh, it says, And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. Now, of course, he had some help. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you need help to follow God when it's been a while. Wow. Amen? Yeah. You've been at a church for a little while? Probably not y'all. Maybe someone on there. You've been at a church for a little while? You know, we got a new couple coming to our church. They said, We've been at a church for a long time, Brother Randy. Please be patient with us. We're trying to get back in. Amen. You know, you get so used to working on Sundays or doing whatever you're doing on Sundays after you've fallen out. It ain't easy to come back. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I pray to God you never will. You need a good heating. You know, commands are first. 
Commands are for heeding. Commands come first. Commands are for heeding. Randy, what is heeding? <laughs> Listening. Doing what the command says. And what do we find? Then we find a good freeing. In verse 7, it says, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. Notice the order. Notice the order of events. Joshua. God's like, you're going to march around these walls. Okay? Okay. They start marching around the walls. And if you watch Veggie Tales, they start pouring Slurpees on them. <laughs> I wish he was. Oh, I got his attention. <laughs> but you know what? They're mocking him. They're walking around those walls. What's walking around the walls going to do to these bricks? Ow. These are some hard bricks. This is a big wall. March again. Joshua's like, okay, guys, we're going to go again. You ready? All right, yeah, we'll, we'll go. God asked us to do it. Amen. If we die, we'll at least go to heaven. <laughs> um, the last day. All right, now what I want you to do, guys, you're going to march, and then I want you to shout. Amen. And you're like, shout. These are brick walls. Okay, put mortar, brick, they're big. I mean, archaeology says they're probably two layers of walls. Uh, this is going to be kind of hard, but God wants us to march and shout before those walls ever fall down. Come on, brother. Come on. Arise, my soul. Ar arise. You're sitting in a prison. Sing it anyway, man. Sing it anyway, man. Shake off thy guilty. You're sitting in a prison. How can I shake these chains off, man? I'm stuck. Obedience came first. Then the freeing. You know what? Sometimes when people get sick, because you get sick when you're locked up, man. You don't have all these things. I mean, oh, you, I need an aspirin. Oh, well, good. Try coffee. You know, I mean, we don't have aspirin around here, but the coffee is nasty. I, that's all we got, man. We're in prison. You, know, you don't have all these, like, I mean, anyway, but sometimes you get so sick you can't even eat. Because once it starts getting in your head that you're stuck, this depression starts going deep and you lose your appetite. Uh -huh. yeah. You need to force feed yourself yeah. with God's good things. Yeah. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like singing the hymns. I don't feel like running a lap. Run it! Amen! Come on, brother! My third point is you need to cast on thy garments. Look at Acts 12, verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. So he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. I don't have much education, but when you're getting a message together, you need to always consider the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Your message for a retirement home is going to be a little bit different than for a youth camp, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Which I don't know that this one actually qualifies as a youth camp anymore. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> but, but I just want to point out right now, look at verse 8. It says, And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. And bind on thy sandals. This is biblical proof that Peter was an Asiatic Shemite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I thought I'd at least get an amen for that one. Here, let me wrap it real quick. <laughs> uh. But I want to point this out. Sometimes in deep bouts of depression, people find it hard to do the simple things. Like even getting dressed. Turn to Proverbs 24. I wish, I wish, I, I don't know, man. I wish I could preach like these other guys. I can't. All these guys, I mean, majority of the people here, I look up to. And I don't care if you're younger. You know, the younger folks, I'm like, man, I, I hope me and Mary Chris can raise Josiah to be like you guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, just in the short amount of time we've known you guys, and I think it's a short amount of time. You're like, Brother Randy, you're like an uncle. <laughs> I don't know if I am or not, but I mean, but the fact is, I mean, even seeing your guys' orchestra just explode like that, yeah. that stuff takes Amen. hard work, man. Blessing. That's a blessing, man. Amen. But Proverbs 24, and look at verse 30 and 31. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall there, excuse me, thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands of sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. And me and Brother Walker, it's not travaileth, it's traveleth. You go on a couple trips on your own wallet, you'll see what this verse means. It's expensive. <laughs> come as one that traveleth. And I want as an armed man. Well, Randy, that doesn't really seem like it's kind of talking about what you're talking about. But the devil, when he can get you in that cell, he can use inactivity to create a hedge of thorns around you. You don't feel like doing anything. You can't get up. Get up for what? I don't got nothing to get up for. You need to get up. You got to eat. Sit up, man. Go outside. Take a walk. And I thought it was interesting that those thorns, they replace the brick wall. What have you been getting all that preaching on, guys? We're building a wall. Right? I mean, Pastor Stevenson, he said that the devil... Man, he's good at breaking down some brick walls. But the devil believes in replacement theology. <laughs> he's not going to just leave those walls down. He's going he's gonna to get you stuck in there with the thorns. And you ain't going nowhere if he has anything to say about it. Which being, brings me to my last point. Cast out. Of prison. So we have cast in, cast off, cast on, and cast out of prison. We're in Acts 12, and I want to read 9 and 10. It says, uh, He went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened, un, um, opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Hold your finger there and go to Acts 27. We need to get some clarity real quick. Go to Acts 27 and verse 23, because we haven't even addressed this angel yet, have we? We're going to find out right now who this angel is. Acts 27, 20. Actually, look at uh, verse 22. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Verse 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, 
whose I am and whom I serve. Um, the devil is good at breaking down walls. Amen? I mean, I, I bet if I was a betting man, we could go around here and we, you just got some real sob stories of some Christians having the devil break down those walls. Oh, yes. And, and I mean, we could sit here and reminisce. And, I mean, you need to pray for those people. Yes. Every once in a while, I wonder where they are. Pray that maybe God will have you cross their path and at least give an invite back. That's good, brother. But you know who else good at breaking down walls? The Lord Jesus Christ. If you're in a prison today, he can break down those walls. You're staring, you're staring at the ground. You're contemplating ending it all. Jesus Christ can break down those walls, man. You have hope. And I just want to say this. Peter got out of the clink. <laughs> Woo! Randy, what's the clink? <laughs> he got out of jail. Peter got out. And the fact is, that's a good encouragement, I think. And somebody hopefully got some encouragement from that. But the fact is, you're going to go home to some of the same problems you left. And you had a good church camp, man. You were up at the altar whenever you needed to be. Amen? Whenever God said, go, you were down, man. But you're going to go back home. Back to work, back to the whole humdrum, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And it's all just waiting. Yeah. Right, right. Some things will never be fixed this side of heaven. Yeah. Some things will just never be fixed. Divorces will never be put back together. Kids' hearts hurt, it's not going to be fixed. People that left, I mean, may, maybe some of them will never come back. Um, you know, your, your little things that you, you're experiencing, I mean, some things, man, you just go so far, it's never going to be fixed. I mean, if, if anyone here is doing drugs, I'll tell you from, some, from personal experience, you're never going to get that stuff back. That's right. You want, to, you want to blow your mind? You're never going to get it back. That's right. Yes. I mean, God can restore, amen? Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But you're going to find it harder to read, yes. harder to study, True. harder to memorize, yes. because you cut loose for a few years. That's right. Get right. Me and Brother Rob Randall, we were talking about, you know, you just can't go through that life without, without it tagging you. What is that? Like, you know, like those fishermen, you know, they'll, they'll catch a shark or something and, and they tag that thing. And that shark for the rest of its life, it's going around with that tag on it. And, you know, it, sometimes you forget it's there, but, you know, you brush up against that little coral reef. Oh, that's good. it's still there. Yes. <laughs> I've been tagged. That's good. I've been tagged. Which makes me, I just forgot something really good, so I guess I'll, I'll say it now. There's a man that was healed from being lame in John chapter 5. And Jesus said, take up thy bed and walk. Okay. That's good. That's good news. And he took up his bed and walked. Why did Jesus make him take up his bed? You don't read that that man ever put that bed down. 
Could you imagine him showing up to Thanksgiving with that bed? What are you doing, man? We're trying to have a meal here. That thing stinks. Don't you remember, like, man, you were, like, lame for years, man. There's, like, some nasty stuff on that bed. Get it out. Jesus said, take up my bed and walk. This is my bed. You know, you really got some stuff from that old life. I don't like it. Yes. I can't change it. That's right. I can't change it, guys. I got problems, man. I've been tagged. Yes. <laughs> but thank God I'm no longer tagged for hell. Woo! That's an Oliver Green message. Tag for hell. <laughs> I'm no longer tagged for hell, man. You know, some of those things, Jesus Christ just takes right off, man, but he leaves some of them. Uh, I guess Dr. Ruckman, he used to say, you know, he leaves just enough fleas on you to remember you're a dog. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but let me show you uh, one of these Brother Lynn's teachings right here. And we'll end with this. Almost. <laughs> We're in Acts uh, 12. I want you to look at verse 10. And it says, when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. Okay. Who cares? Who cares? Hold your finger there. Go to Revelation 21. And look at verse 21. Now this is talking about the heavenly Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. This is talking about heaven for you guys. Look at verse 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. All these hymns, maybe not all of them, but you'll hear periodically talking about the streets of gold. He knows you Baptists, so he knew there had to be one street. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Right? Amen. Right? Right. Amen. One street. <laughs> We're all from the same hood. That's right. Amen? Yes. <laughs> One street. And you know what? There's some problems here on earth that you will never be freed from. There's some, some pains, some sorrows, some hurts that you will never be able to shed until Jesus Christ says, Come up hither! Amen. And you're going to make the great jailbreak. Amen. And that devil's going to... Where'd he go? Where'd he go? The bricks are here. Were you watching them? Where'd he go? And Jesus broke down those walls, man. He, pe he peered down from heaven. He saw you in that little brick structure. And he just went, hi -ya! Obviously, in an Asiatic Shemitic style. But let's end with this. Go to Revelation 21. And I want you to look at verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be, be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And I wanted to read just the first part of the next verse because I think it really fits. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Yeah. 